Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's so good to have you back. My name's Jesse, if you're new here. Uh, today it is just lovely weather outside and I got a wild hair and I want to kind of do an outside project while the weather's still nice. Uh, apparently it's supposed to snow maybe tomorrow or the next day, so if I'm going to get a project done outside, today has to be the day to do it. Let me show you what I'm doing. Uh, some of you may remember from, oh, it's been quite a while ago now, uh, we got these goats and I made this hay feeder for them, really trying to do it on the cheap. And it's been working fairly, fairly well for now almost a year. But uh, lately, what do you think you're doing? That's not how it's supposed to be used. My gosh, you guys just ripped a hole right into it. Yeah, these guys are destructive. I've decided to do a few modifications to this thing. I would love to show you guys what I plan to do with these things. First things first, I think I kind of need to get this thing dug up. It's become kind of buried in all the hay and other stuff that's fallen out of the hay feeder. My word, look how much stuff was underneath it. It is just piled on top of here. So that took a lot more effort than I actually was anticipating. A whole lot more. Doesn't help any that the ground is frozen still a little bit. It's a warm day. In fact, after that I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to take my coat off here in a second. But underneath all that hay and stuff, it's still good and frozen. But we got it dug up. Now we can actually work on the thing. First thing I'm going to have to deal with is these... I don't know what you call these things, these braces down at the bottom. When I first made this, the, the design that I saw online, like I said, it's worked really well for us for the most part, but the design I had, it was just the X's and the fencing, right? Well, <laughs> with this much above that hinge point, these guys, they're like I said, they're rough and destructive with things. They can just tip that right over and we found that out right quickly. So what I did was got just a piece of flat board. You can use two by four. I just used some old pieces that were lying around. Something that could span the width of this thing, go from one side to the other and connect to these two legs on the way. Sort of make a brace for both sides. So a whole lot less likely to tip even when they're being rough on it. But now in order to make this modification work, I'm going to have to get these things off. Already I've run into kind of a hiccup. I uh, went to take the screw out of this one. You see that, that tip of the screw right there? I cannot for the life of me find the other end over here. But I actually, now that I've had a, some time to think about it, I'm not sure why I thought it would be necessary to take those things off in the first place. Yeah, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna leave those things on. But well now I have to put them back on. Meh. Backing up sometimes is the worst part. I think my original thought was to get these off so that I could take these apart and put them at more of a 90 degree angle to try to broaden that base that spread between these legs to give it more stability but honestly these things do the job just fine and uh, what's, how does that saying go if a job is not worth doing at all it's certainly not worth doing right something like that I think that's what I've heard I think I've got a better idea uh, I was really struggling with this these fencing staples so I figured why not save myself that extra hassle and just try to take it off where I can. But instead, you know, I've got these, I've got these nifty fencing pliers. I'm just gonna go ahead and clip this fencing. This was all just scrap welded wire anyway. I was gonna go to the dump one way or the other. 
So I think I'm gonna try to save myself the headache and just clip all this and take these two sides off. But I will leave, I will leave these side ones on since that hasn't been the problem. Okay, well there's one side. Thankfully there's only two sides that I need to do that with. All right, now that that's over with, it's time for the little bit more fun part. Gonna get measurements of the width of these things again, the width and height. It may have changed since I did this last, you know, the wood warps a little bit, gets bent out of shape. 38 across, mm. we'll say 33 just to be safe. 38 by 33. And 39, hmm. That's interesting. 39 by 32. I'll just go 33 on this as well. 38 by 33 and 39 by 33. Seems easy enough. Rachel and I were talking about it and we had the idea for this, uh, this sheep and goat fencing for the feeder. We figured, you know, this is the stuff that we use to fence them in. They've gotten out a few times, you know, at the, at the doorways, you know, where the, the fence is sort of loose to allow us into the area. They've gotten out there, but they've never been able to break this fence. So I'm gonna try some pieces of this on the feeder as well. The openings are a little bit wider, so that'll be good for them to get hay out a little bit more easily. And hopefully, I'm, not, I'm pretty sure this stuff is not supposed to break. What was it I was saying, 39 by 33? I think, if I remember correctly, this was yeah, about four feet. So I don't need to worry about one of those dimensions. I'll just use that for the longer side. So that'll be the 39 side. And 33 looks about right there. We'll cut it off right here at the next link. I figured I'd just do 39 for both sides, uh, 39 long. And uh, it's always easy to, to fold over the excess rather than accidentally short yourself and then you've got a whole cut a whole other piece. No extra charge for the super handy dandy last year's planting pots for uh, weights. <laughs> Alright, now, dare I say it, I think the hardest parts of this project are done. I just need to get these two pieces of fencing uh, attached to that, to the frame back there. And uh, I, think, I think that should be it. I need to hurry and get in there before they get tangled up in the fence or something. I think before I do that though, I'm gonna go ahead and move the hay feeder because look at this. Look how much this has piled up just from the hay falling out of the feeder and them spreading it all around. Look at the difference. See that difference? See that hill? So I'm gonna move this feeder over here maybe right quickly. Now maybe the hay and the manure that get dropped right here can feed another spot. And that's that old spot, uh, now that I'm thinking about it, it, that hay can just sit there and decompose, break down for the rest of the winter. And by springtime, I'm thinking that might be some pretty darn good compost. And enough talk about that though. I guess, I guess I am getting a little bit excited for springtime. Seriously, look at these guys. They'll just play in anything, on anything. Bunch of play babies. Yeah, wag your tail.
All right, guys, that's it for the hay feeder build. Looks like it's working just fine right now. Rach was saying that this was gonna be the warmest day for the week and we might have snow as early as tomorrow. So if need be, I guess I can always go in there and fish out the hay if they haven't eaten it by then and toss it under the overhead canopy just so it's protected from the rain. But it's working for right now. <laughs> Some of the younger ones look a little bit confused because there's no hole there for them to jump up in now and they have to eat it like normal. <laughs> Well, guys, that does it for this video. I think I'm going to get the, the kids bundled up a little bit and go for a walk while the weather's still nice. But we're going to call it for right now. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up before you head. And uh, subscribe down below if you haven't already. We sure appreciate that. And feel free to leave a comment. We always love talking to you guys. That's That makes our day. So we're going to call it for this video. And uh, we'll hope to see you again in the next one. And until then, take it easy.